and aftercare lead at Celsius. For those of you that don't know Celsius, it's the Centre for Excellence Room after Children in Scotland, and we're here to support um, Scotland's corporate parents and uh, to improve children's experiences, to improve services and provisions for children, particularly looks after children, care leavers and their experienced young adults. I'm also privileged to be the, the chair and convener of the Scottish Care Leavers Covenant, and part of what I'm going to talk about this morning is what that means, what it is, what it involves, uh, and what I hope it means will mean for you um, as, as corporate parents and representatives of corporate parent organisations and, and departments and services here in South Lanarkshire. I'm especially pleased that as part of your event today we've had the corporate signing of the, the covenant by uh, Maureen, your deputy council leader. So that's a great big plus. Thank you very much for that. You uh, join um, over 50% of Scotland's local authorities that have now taken this pledge, made this vow, and a covenant is a solemn vow, a promise to do more than just the basics. Okay, right? We know what the law says. The law says that you've got to do this, and that's a bare minimum. What would, you wouldn't do that as, a, as, as parents, would you? No, you would, you would do the very best. And that's what we aspire for for our kids in Scotland. And Kevin alluded to it earlier on, the kind of groundbreaking legislation, the groundbreaking policy and ambition that we've got for, for our kids here in Scotland. And, and the covenant is a way of going above and beyond that, because that's really, really, really important. And, and that matters a lot to me, and I'm going to tell you a wee bit more about why that is. It matters that you're pledging your commitment to go further, to do more than just the basics, and aspire for excellence as corporate parents. And I'm sure, however, it matters much more to you looked after young people, to your children and your care experienced young adults, that, whose lives are directly affected by your actions and your, your, your services. The world is watching. We are groundbreaking in our, in our legislation and our policy. And that's a great thing. It's a really, really big thing that the, the independent care review that's going on is, is, is groundbreaking across the world, across um, beyond the world, I guess, if you, you know, other places across the universe. People were looking down on us, thinking, God, look at that wee place, look at that in Scotland, that wee nation, really, really setting the trend, and that's really important. And supporting our care experience, young people in the Arabic means more than just delivering on our legal duties but it's also about our ethical and our moral responsibilities. It's not just about fulfilling the letter of the law, it's the spirit of the law that matters. It's about social justice <coughs> for care experienced young people, where they don't have to repeatedly or continually hustle and tussle to have their needs met or their legal rights and entitlements fulfilled. It's about us collectively here today as human rights defenders, as Scotland's Commissioner Bruce Adamson reminded us at last year's Covenant Conference. What matters is that Scotland does become the very best place for, in the world for children to grow up, especially those in and leaving care, and the world looks to us as a beacon of excellence and enlightenment and hope. The average age of leaving care in Scotland, as Kevin said, is 17, and the average age of leaving home is 26. I just want you to pause for a minute and reflect on how much growing up you did between the age of 17 and 26? Yeah? Just think about it. How much growing up you did. Think back how prepared you would be to leave care at 17 <coughs> compared to 26. Think about your own kids if they're still there, 28, 29, 30, quite often. Um, are they still ready? Are they ready? Would you send them out in the world? Would you send your kids out in the world at 16? Where we can't get jobs that pay a living wage for 16 year olds. You can't get a house, you can't get accommodation without skinning yourself. Would you do that? But yet, that's what we expect and we accept for our care experienced young people. That matters to me that that's no good enough. So, just thinking about the chronological age gap, how much growing up you do. Um, think about your kids going off to university, going off to college. Do they come back at weekends? Do they come back at holidays? Would you be upset if they didn't? Yeah. But again, we've got this abrupt, accelerated transition for our young people across Scotland, despite the legislation, despite the policy, despite the fact that we've had these in legislation and policy for nigh on 20 years. This is the 10th anniversary of the uh, Sweet 16 report, which highlighted the scandalous age of kids being uh, 
accelerated our care at 16, 10 years, and we've increased it to 17. We need to up the pace of change. We need to up the pace of change. That really matters to me. And it's about closing the gap in expectations, closing the gap between the rhetoric and the reality. We need to change the frame. It's not about transitions to independence. <coughs> it's about transitions to adulthood. How many of us here are truly independent? Hands up. No? Good. <laughs> I don't know what I'd, I'd have done if somebody put their hand up. But we rely on each other. We rely on our friends, our family, our colleagues, our mum, our dad, our aunties, our neighbours. But yet we talk about independent living, getting kids ready for independent living. Yeah. Is that a bit absurd? Yeah. As Stephen Gatt said, it is about transitions to adulthood. So why should it be different for our care experienced young people? Mike Steen, great um, Weaving Care Guru, talks about the dangers of instant adulthood. And we thrust that upon our young people. You know, these abrupt accelerated transitions. Quite often weaving your, your home, your community, your school, all in the space, or in a week or a couple of weeks. So it matters that we create a different language, a different culture to inform a different response to better support for our care experience young people. How we describe it, how we talk about it, it really matters. Really matters because language is powerful. It shapes an agenda. Yeah. So the love debate, which we could debate, is really important because it actually puts that word on the table and gets us to think about what that means. Yeah. All care is preparation for adult life. We need to think about that. Preparation for adulthood is not simply preparation for independence, where most of people parental support, however intermittent, carries on in their twenties. Young people in care also need this, that support. Now, you can read that. That's since 1992. Now, if I could do sums, I wouldn't have been a social worker. I'd have been an accountant. I'd be retired by now. But that's quite a long time ago. And we were talking about that then. But we still have got this snail space, glacial space, piecemeal implementation. And again, that isn't good enough. Security is provided for children and young people through consistency of care in an environment which is predictable and consistent. And we heard this morning about aspirations where young people have got a home for life. And that's really, really, really important. That matters a lot to me. But what Skinner was saying um, 26 years ago, it wasn't even new thinking then. And it's still vitally relevant now. It's important that we move from this child rescue perspective to a more holistic approach seeking to optimise longer term outcomes for the young people. In the adulthood, way beyond that. What matters is you turn that rhetoric into reality. Now in 2014, CELSIS, and, uh, along with the uh, Scottish Through Care and Aftercare Forum, undertook a piece of national research into through care and aftercare services. And I'm actually delighted that uh, South Lanarkshire are putting a dedicated through care and after service back on the ground. It's really, really important. That's a fantastic uh, aspiration and ambition to have because we know that these sort of services are really, really important for that group of young people that struggle to, uh, to hang on to relationships um, or where we struggle to hang on to them, uh, more, more the case. But what, it, what the 2014 study did highlight was a significant variation, the inconsistencies across the 32 authorities effectively highlighting a postcode lottery of services support. And it matters, it really, really matters to me that a young person in one authority can get one level of support and service and a young person in another authority gets a different level. That's not right. It's no fair. And if we want Scotland to be genuinely the best place for every young person to grow up, then they all need and require and demand uh, and have a right to equitable services across the board, the best housing accommodation, the best through care support, the best college pathways, regardless whether you live in Inverness, <coughs> Edinburgh or Hamilton. Yep. Why that's important, I'll come on to it because of the care weavers coming in in a minute. I'm just going to go into this uh, wee bit about setting the context for the Act. We talked to, Kevin talked about this morning um, about the Children and Young People Act and placing new corporate parent duties on a whole range of partners and that's really, really important because again, it's that kind of whole notion that it takes a village to raise a child. Social work for many, many years has been burdened with this task of doing everything. But what we, what we know is we couldn't do it everything. We've got to work in partnership with health, with education. Education is a huge, huge player in children's lives. Yeah, but again, we heard that kids coming out of schools to go to hearings, to lack reviews and stuff like that. And poor education can be a real source of comfort, a real source of security and succor for children. It's really, really important. 
Um, continued care. Again, the average age of leaving care is 21. Now, there is an argument that, 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 that was around when the bill was being drafted and the act was coming into place that young people should have a right to return to care up to 26 and stuff like that. And that, that is around. You know, there's nothing that stops us from doing that. Um, but I think having this um, age of 21 at least pushes that, at least pushes that a, a bit further up the road. It's really, really important. Um, but it, what it says is that young people have got um, the right to remain in the same accommodation. So one of the things that we hear in other areas is that we're moving young people to a continuing care placement. Now that kind of jars me about me, because that doesn't mean continuing care, does it? No. It means staying with that, your forever destination. And one of the good things about Scottish, and the good things, I'm still in the vernacular there. <laughs> one of the good things, my mother will be so displeased. One of the good things about, about Scotland is that in England it only applies foster care, where we know that applies equally up here in Scotland to residential care, and there's some great examples of that. And some of the stuff that's played out is about, well, how can you have a 19-year-old in the same children's home or children's house as a 12-year-old? Well, that only applies if you see young people as a deficit. See them as an asset, as a role model, and we know that some of the great work that's going on actually displays that. So you've got a 19-year-old going off to college or going to a modern apprenticeship. What a great role model that is for the younger kids. Yeah. So some of this myth busting that goes around needs to get ramped up a wee bit. And aftercare support at 26, really, really important. <coughs> and corporate parenting is, is a holistic, a holistic endeavour. A young an organisation's performance actions to uphold the rights and safeguard the well-being through physical, emotional, spiritual, social and educational development. That's the whole package, isn't it? So it isn't just I'll just do this bit, I'll just do that bit. We need to see young people in the realm, in a holistic sense. So it matters to me that what we aim to do, our actions, what we write in the plans and strategies, has the, has the needs and issues of children and families at the very heart of them. We're talking at the table where we're on about strategies. And I've got a mate, Gary, and he's, he's great at kind of reality checking. He says, does your strategy chart doors? Because that's really what we need. Yeah. We talk about relationships. You can't relate to them. I mean, I love the, I love the idea of the website. But you need people as well. You can't have a way to a computer on its own. Yeah. So you, does your strategy chart doors get out there and be the relationship that young people need? Yeah. And the emphasis much more on the parenting and less on the corporate. Yeah. So I'm going to digress for a little bit and I'm, indulge me if you like. Um, so we talked earlier about the amount of policies we've got. We've got acres going back decades. Really good stuff. You know, way back to Skinner Report, Kilbrandon Report, 50 years on this year, you know. Um, what's a really good enabling policy, positive driving policy, really enabling legislation that doesn't actually stop us from doing anything, it allows us to be the best corporate parents. And what's the guidance? So the question is, why do too many young people still experience disruptive care and poor outcomes across the board? So, park that for a wee minute, and I've got a wee quiz. So, ADHD, ADD, OCD, ODD, these things ring bells to people, yeah? So what does ADHD mean? Answers? Attention deficit, hyperactivity disorder, it means running, but you know, busy, you know, you get upset on lots of stuff going on, yeah? ADD, attention deficit, same thing, just no quick so busy, right? OCD, anybody know? Obsessive compulsive disorder. That's a thing that particularly affects middle aged men with C D collections. Alphabetical <laughs> chronological order. Where did you put that radio head C D man? Yeah. Uh, ODD <coughs> Oppositional Defiance Disorder. When my granny used to say no taking a tell one. <laughs> now I don't mean to make light of these things, you know, if there's educational psychology or psychologists in. They're, they're, they're useful terms, but they're more useful for us as adults, you know, they help us put a shape around a child's distress or trauma, yeah, generally. But the biggest thing that impacts on, on our care experience young people is IDD, and it affects probably most of them in this country. Anybody know what that is? IDD. It's really, really important. It's fundamental to improving the well-being. Implementation deficit disorder, and we own that. We own that because we've got all this policy, all this research and all this legislation, but we don't fully implement it. And that's really, really important. And that's why the covenant matters, because it helps us take that next step yeah, by making that promise. 
in real way is important. Okay. So on to the covenant. We kind of took a good idea for England and stole it and made it better, you know, as we kind of tend to do. And actually last week, the English government, the UK government, the English government, um, launched their care weaver covenant. And it's no Apache and ours, right? But we took the original idea for them. Um, and across um, a, a multi-sector group of organisations, um, the people that work with care weavers, care experienced young people, looked after children, with the voices and experiences that looked after children and young people themselves and that, we came up with this notion of a covenant, <coughs> a support to Scotland's corporate parents that would help them with a very difficult, multifaceted task of making improvement across a whole range of issues. Okay? And what we're asking corporate parents to do um, is to actively endorse the covenant, to embrace it, to integrate the actions within your own corporate parent action plan. And if the 32 authorities did that, we'd go some way to eradicating some of the postcode water that exists. Yeah. To take specific relevant action to fully support and implement the agenda for change, which is the range of actions within the covenant. Okay? It was designed explicitly to, to address the implementation deficit order, disorder that I mentioned. And more importantly, it's more than what a, a, a good parent do. It's more than just the basics. It's, it's aspiring to excellence. Implementing policy effectively is a recognised challenge across the board. Childcare policies, particularly for care weavers, can take a long time to become part of the mainstream everyday practice. And successfully and meaningfully implementing the Act needs ongoing political commitment with leadership at national and local level to support organisations and services to go beyond mere compliance and aspire to excellence. That's what we hope it does. Yeah? Not just to be any old parent, but to be the best for your kids. Because they're your kids. They're South Lanarkshire's kids. They're your kids for life. Yeah? Not to 16, no to but to life. Okay? I'm passionate. I've been doing this for 32 years and it really, really matters. It's really difficult to follow Kevin Brown when you're speaking because, you know, the bar is set so high and, and he's made this his life's work, but he's gone, well, you've been doing this since you were a boy as well, you know, but for a different, different perspective, so it really, really matters. Because I'm hopefully at some point coming towards my end of my working life, not nearly quite so quickly as was there, and unfortunately, and I mean that in the nicest possible way, I'm exceedingly jealous, <laughs> but I want to see some of this stuff really make a step change before I hang up my spurs. And that's why this is really, really important. We ask again, would this be good enough for your child? And if you can't answer that honestly, then we need to change it. We need to change that frame. Just a bunch of the organisations there. And since that was the, the 2015 um, cohort that helped us develop the, the covenant, since then, We've been supported by over 500 um, sign-ups, over half Scotland's local authorities, 14 colleges and universities, NHS Scotland, um, SCRA, SSSC, the Care Inspector, are all, all behind this in terms of making the commitment to, to care experience young people. Um, and it's really, really important because this is a partnership. So the Covenant... What, is it, what does it actually ask us to do? It asks us to base everything we do on a set of founding principles. The care proof and the policy, which recognises the vulnerability of care experienced young people as young adults and prioritises them and references them within policy, policy documents. Right? And I think this one is probably the key one for me in many ways, the assumption of entitlement. It assumes that all care, care weavers are entitled to services, support and opportunities. They, don't, they shouldn't have to come begging for it. They shouldn't have to come fighting their corner time and time and time again. It's an assumption of entitlement. So an example of that would be the council tax exemption, you know, which, again, Kevin mentioned this morning, or the SAS bursary. You shouldn't have to prove to your corporate parent that you were in care. They should know you were in care and just automatically assume that you're entitled to it. You know, young folk have got too much of a fight in their hands to fight for some of these basic things, and that's really, really important. Staying put in continuing care is a huge challenge across the sector because of resource and capacity. We know that. Every local authority is struggling with that, and it's a major challenge. However, if we really want to close the gap and, 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 and bring equity for this group of young people, we need to try and, 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 and implement this as fully and meaningfully as we can. And we need to empower our young people to do it. We need to encourage them, and we need, we need to enable them. And that also means encouraging, enabling, and empowering their carers as well. And the relationship-based practice, the foundation of everything we do. 
everything we do that's good in this world is based on relationships. Every programme, every intervention, every trick that we pull out of our bag to help people is based on the effectiveness is based on the relationships we have with them. Yeah. Policy areas, or as we like to call them, policy pillars. Um, health and well-being, housing and accommodation, education and training, employment, youth and criminal justice, and rights and participation. These are only uh, separate things, we've just put them in there, um, to, in terms of management. Man they're all interconnected and interrelated series of actions um, built on the strong foundations of staying put in relationship-based practice. So within that, there are actions for health, there are actions for um, education, actions for employers, for things like family, firm, etc, etc. So whatever corporate parent hat you've got on, there will be an action that you can do. It's not going to be the full picture, but it's something if you picked it up and did it the best of your ability as a service or a practitioner, you would make that difference and that's really, really important. And it's important to remember, as we've heard, the lack of safety net that some young people have. You know? Care weavers can be much more likely to be unfairly sanctioned with DWP. Care weavers lack the, lack the safety net with the bank of mum and dad. Local authorities actually can be the worst creditors, taking their own kids to court for failing to pay their rent or for housing arrears or council tax arrears. Yeah. Would you take your own kids to court because they hadn't put their big money in it? I don't think you would. And the future life chances of care weavers are dependent on which local authority they were in. Make South Lanarkshire's kids have the very best life chances. Yeah. And that matters to you, I guess, if you take pride in your work. So, over 500 sign-ups and endorsements, corporate leadership at CEO uh, or elected member level in the majority. And that's really, really important because where corporate leadership shows the way, then it filters down. You know, the, that shapes the culture through your organisation. So having really committed senior managers and elected members will help you do this job. They'll enable you to take these risks and do the best that you can. A wide range of individuals involved in that as well. So if you're interested, you can sign up our website. You can visit the website and sign up as an individual. You can up to date um, information uh, and all news and resources. And it's also about changing the narrative around about care weavers. Changing the culture, changing practice and changing lives. Here we have got a group of young people from Inverness who, um, through their Champs board, take the covenant and bring in their senior officers and say, OK, this month what are we going to talk about housing? How's that working at first? How's the protocol working? Next month, talking about family firm, where are the employability opportunities for care members in this organisation? And they're co-creating that change, co-creating a better future, co-creating a better range of services, informing and influencing local and national policies. Implementing policy effectively, particularly for care weavers, is arguably a wicked issue. It's one that's highly resistant to change, to resolution, and a system with people often resistant to change. Right? So it's not just a financial thing, there is a culture and practice issue. Ideological, philosophical agendas, what we mean by beliefs and values, and a real world agendas of finance and resources often get in the way, and we need to change that. But organisations don't change people do. People do that by thinking differently and acting differently. Under the United Nations Convention of the Rights of the Child, care experience obligates extra protection and assistance. We need to incorporate that and fully implement that. Respecting and protecting and fulfilling the rights of care experienced people is something already within our power. And that's what matters to me. It's a social justice issue. Don't wait on the system to change, be the change. Start now where you are and do what you can. Now, I want to leave you with a quote from the late great novelist Ian Banks. Everything makes a difference, but nothing makes all the difference. We build better lives and a better world, slowly, painstakingly. There are no shortcuts, just lots of improvements, most small, a few greater and none decisive. Be the change, change lives for the better and all the best. Thank you very much. Thank you.